Year 10, welcome to term two. It's week two. We survived week one. I'm sure you learn a lot. I'm sure I learned a lot. I'm sure you were frustrated. I'm sure I was frustrated, but we're still here. We're gonna have a crack at week two now, and we're gonna learn from week one, and we're gonna try and do better in week two. Okay, that's my plan. That's our plan together. Let me tell you about my weekend. My brother has a two-year-old daughter. Now, I don't know whether you guys have much experience looking after two-year-olds, but they're a lot of work. Now, I woke up Saturday morning and I thought, oh, I'm a bit tired today. I don't know what I feel like. I thought, all right, well, let's create some positive ripples for someone else. If I'm not feeling the juju today, I'm gonna try and create some positive ripples for someone else. So anyway, get my slow cooker out. I cook my brother an incredible meal in the morning. In the afternoon, I drive around to his place, set up a little picnic blanket in his backyard, put out a whole heap of food, sanitized, and said, come on out, enjoy the dinner. I hope I've made your day. And it did. It was fantastic. They were my positive ripples for the weekend. Okay. How did you create positive ripples this weekend? I want you to email me. I want you to press pause on this and I want you to write an email to me now and say, sir, this is what I did to create some positive ripples for someone else this weekend. Go. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all your emails and I'm going to put them into a big collage. Okay, I'm going to create a big notice board um, on OneNote and I'm gonna share all your positive ripples for last weekend so we can all see it, okay? So email me, put them all together, and we'll create a big positive ripple wall, all right? Now, let's look forward to week two. It's a tough one, but here's what I want you to do. First thing, recap and reflect on week one. What worked, what didn't work? Were you distracted? What, what things were, were, were stopping you from from engaging or from completing your work. Identify those things and make changes. So for me, one of the things that was difficult in terms of week one was um, the amount of emails I was getting. So I was losing track of all the emails. So what I've had to do and what I've had to change for this week is to um, create some folders and to create a um, priority list with my email so I know who I've responded to, who I haven't responded to, and that way I can be way more efficient and way more effective with my email. Have you got yourself a daily time table? Is that working? If not, I've sent you one in the emails. I want you to get that out. I want you to have a crack at it. It makes a big difference. Routines in every single one of your days of the week will make a significant impact on how effective you are and how focused you are for the day. Another tip for you is syncing your OneNote on the weekend or early in the morning or late at night when there's not so much internet traffic. I think that's a great little ploy and I think that'll help. That way you're not um, coming up with the errors and you're not coming up with the syncing problems that we were experiencing much of last week. Now, fourth point, distractions. Whew. I struggle to work on my laptop. The reason I struggle to work on my laptop is there are so many little alerts, so many little things that can take my mind away from what I'm supposed to be doing. So I want you to think about this week and I want you to try and identify times when you're distracted by things. Is your phone sitting next to your computer while you're trying to do some work? Are you getting up and going for a snack every 10 minutes like I do, okay? What are the little things in your daily sort of work space that distract you from getting your work done? Identify them, make little changes, make little deals with yourself. I say to myself, all right, I'm gonna do 45 minutes of work and then it's time for a cup of tea. And I stick to it. And then I reward myself after 45 minutes with a nice little sneaky cup of tea, okay? So how can you minimize distractions? I've spoken about this already, but email folders, it's important for you. You're receiving more emails than you would ever receive in a normal school day. So how are you going to organize them? I would set up folders. So one subject, uh, a folder for say science, a, so a folder for maths, a folder for all my different subjects. 
And when emails come in, I read them and then I put them into those folders for, um, for later on when I need to refer to them, okay? It saves me having to scan through this, this list of hundreds and hundreds of emails to try and find something that was sent to me earlier in the week, okay? So email folders are a good one. Now, fun stuff this week, I'm pumped. The Flu Fighters Challenge. Now, if you didn't know this already, it's a bit of a play on words from one of my favorite bands when I was a kid called the Foo Fighters, okay? So the Flu Fighters Challenge. Every week, a new challenge. It could be a physical thing. It could be an artistic thing. Who knows what's going to come out of this brain every single week. But there's going to be something that you guys can challenge yourself with. Now, this week, it's more physical. So it's the longest handstand challenge. If you haven't read the details about it, go back to your email from, from last week that I sent. Have a bit of a read through that. Now, Lulu is dominating. I've seen Lulu's entry, and it is exceptional. But, Lulu, I'm coming for you. I'm up to about four seconds, okay? So by the end of this week, I'm thinking at least 20 seconds handstand hold. That's my challenge for myself, okay? Longest unsupported handstand by a boy and a girl, $5 tuck shot voucher each, okay? It's due this Friday. Trick shot challenge. Entries have slowed up a little bit. Maybe the creativity is going to dry it up a little bit, but I want you to try and re reinvigorate that. I know Miss Miss Amos and Mr. K have got a uh, a trick shot that they're editing at the moment that will be ready to to upload this week. So I'm looking forward to seeing that, and I want to see more of yours. What can you What can you come up with? How can you be creative? I saw a really interesting one the other day. It involved a fork, and a putter, a golf putter, and a twenty cent piece. And it was a guy putting a 20 cent piece from one side of the room to the other side of the room and trying to get it to slot into the little spaces between the fork. Amazing, amazing trick shot. Maybe that could be one for you. Now, rite of passage ideas. It's a challenging time, but I want to continue with this. I don't want to stop. I want this to be um, inspiration for you to to think outside of the box to come up with some new fresh ideas now I've got three ideas for you the first one is a hundred kilometer term so can you run or can you jog or can you walk a hundred kilometers in this term what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the one note and what I'm asking you to do is to use a fit watch or your mobile phone or something like that log your runs log your walks Okay, and then I want you to post them to our OneNote, which I'm setting up this week, and we can keep track of all of your runs, of all of your exercise, and when you get to 100 kilometers, you pass your rite of passage. I think that's pretty cool. Second idea, I want to create a pen pal system with folks in the nursing homes, or maybe cancer kids through camp quality. So these these um, people in a nursing home and, and these people at Camp Quality, they, 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 they are isolated. They're under really strict isolation conditions. So could we create a little pen pal system where you're writing maybe a letter a fortnight to these people? We set up one person within the nursing home, that's your pen pal, or one person uh, or one of the children within the Camp Quality system, and you write a letter to them once a fortnight. Just tell them about your week. Tell them about all the exciting things you're doing, okay? it would make a massive difference to these people, especially in this time of isolation. So that's an idea for a rite of passage. If you're interested in that, maybe email me and we can look further into it. The final one is how can we create some fundraising? How can we raise some money? And how can we then donate that to the health heroes? So the health heroes at the moment are things like paramedics, doctors, nurses, those types of people who are at the forefront of dealing with the viral spread. So if we could come up with some cool way of raising some money, could we donate that to some form of charity or could we set up some form of um, appreciation type gesture to the health heroes? If you've got any ideas on that, email me. Let's work on it. Okay, so write a passage. I want you to be creative. I want you to email me. I want to talk about it. Okay, all right. I want you to have a fantastic week. I want you to think about week one. What can you do better for week two? What are some of the routines? What are some of the uh, healthy processes that you can integrate into your day to make your day of learning better, more enjoyable? And generally just 
um, a lot more fruitful in terms of, 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 of what you're getting out of the day, okay? If you've got any problems, email me, email the guidos. We're here for you, all right? We're here to support you in this time, but you need to reach out to us, okay? Have a fantastic week. It's great to talk to you, and I look forward to these emails about your positive ripples on the weekend. See you later.